Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And in a surprise to me, we're actually going to do a short follow-up to a video we did a couple of weeks back entitled, Is Repurchase Really Outside Their Control? Where we talked about this minor controversy in which 505 Games and their control product that they publish for Remedy Entertainment, which is a company that I actually really like, although I didn't really like this product that they put out there, was making a new version of Control that would get upgraded automatically from the PlayStation 4 to the PlayStation 5, from the Xbox One series, all the way to the Xbox Series X series. But they weren't giving that free upgrade to folks that had already purchased Control, even if those folks had purchased all of the base game, and all of the expansions, which were essentially just being put together in this Ultimate Edition. Now, as part of that video, we talked about some of the problems they were have with actually messaging all of this, with talking to folks about what was happening, why they had to put out a blog post entitled An Explanation because so many people were upset, and we covered some of how the answers they were giving weren't really responsive to the questions that they were asking, of course, themselves, because they were writing this blog post. And one of the things we noted is that they were playing with legal language. And this is undoubtedly drafted by public relations at 505, maybe was vetted through Remedy, who knows, uh, but was also very much looked at by the legal side of things. You are interacting with folks on a contractual basis. You've got money changing hands or that has already changed hands. So this gets vetted by everybody in your business enterprise. Now, if you haven't been in virtual legality before, you should know one of the things that we really like to talk about is the fact that for the most part, when you've got something vetted by lawyers, when you've got something that is a business communication, you can't actually lie. If you lie on a flat out basis, you're going to get into a lot of trouble, either from contract terms, from SEC terms, if you're a public company, all of these various things can happen to you if you flat out lie. So legalese or legal drafting of public relations communications like this is the business of telling you what you want to hear while also omitting things that you don't want to hear and perhaps asking yourself questions that you don't actually answer in the way that it appears that you have done. And such was the case with this particular question. I own the Control Base Game and Season Pass. Is this not the same as Control Ultimate Edition? Now, they answered that. You can see a lot of highlights here that I'm prepared to talk about. But in order to understand why we're talking about this question at all, we have to go look at a Reset Era thread that went live yesterday entitled 505 Games Accidentally Does What They Said Was Impossible upgrades Digital Deluxe owners of Control to Ultimate Edition so that it would automatically get upgraded to the next generation consoles and then revokes it. This is detailed in a post by a member at Reset Era called eZipsis that says, despite their detailed explanation of why they couldn't upgrade owners of the game and season pass to the Ultimate Edition, which we will talk about, 505 Games launched Control Ultimate Edition yesterday, or Tuesday, I think, and had accidentally upgraded owners of the Digital Deluxe Edition to have Control Ultimate Edition. They state in their comments that we're going to look at that the upgrade path that we are offering is only possible when upgrading from the same version of the game. This error has seemingly exposed that the Ultimate Edition in the base game with Season Pass is, in fact, the same version of the game. Now, exposed is an interesting word there because 505 actually didn't claim anything different. That was one of the comments we had in our earlier video is that they're trying to have their cake and eat it too by saying that nothing new will be in the Ultimate Edition so that people that already purchased the product aren't concerned that they're missing out, but also saying you don't get that free upgrade, you don't get ray tracing or frame rates or whatever else you might get in the next generation, which is interesting Because, frankly, Control doesn't always run the best, certainly on the PlayStation side of the equation. It runs a little bit better on the Xbox One X, has been my experience. Now, this is a reset error thread. These are all anonymously sourced. So like anything else that is anonymously sourced in this space, we take it all with a grain of salt. But there seems to be enough corroboration here to suggest that this did, in fact, happen. It says, so Control Ultimate Edition just came out on PSN. It says that I own it. I bought the deluxe edition, which would have been the version that came with the season pass as part of a bundle, but I wonder if you had the game plus the season pass purchased automatically, you own the ultimate edition like most games on PSN. It just upgrades you uh, on PSN or on Steam. There are ways to give you this license if you have the other components that would make up this license. That's also what we talked about in our prior video. 
Then others started corroborating. I tried, and yep, I downloaded the Ultimate Edition from the page. I can't recall if I bought them separately or got that digital deluxe thing that's now delisted, but I can do it too. I have the season pass and base game digitally, and Ultimate Edition has a download to PS4 button, but it still shows a price, which is weird. Maybe it's a glitch. Maybe it's a bug. Possibly. It's certainly an unintended consequence of however they wound up uploading this Ultimate Edition concept from 505 Games. Same thing here from the Deluxe Edition. Had the season pass purchased. Now they show free. All this other stuff, including the original poster himself, went to the store, found Control Ultimate Edition. So it seems like it's not even a different SKU. It's literally the same bundle as what was previously offered. Now, 505 Games has said that it's different, that they're making changes to it, but maybe those changes are really reflective of the next generation. Very hard to tell. Real lack of transparency here. Understand, when I talk about these things in virtual legality and I'm talking to you about them, about what I see is the dancing in terms of these statements, doesn't mean I think that they're good. Doesn't even mean that I think that they are good at it. Just I want to talk about what it is that they're doing and why this thread is actually inaccurate, that 505 never claimed what this thread intimates that they claimed, which is a problem on the thread's part, but it's also a problem from 505 Games' perspective. Yeah, they went so close to the line that it's very easy to see how people wound up thinking that it was technically impossible, and now that it is shown that it is not, 505 Games has maybe an explanation to blog post to draft up. Not long after, this accidental upgrade was revoked. Okay, so 13 hours ago and throughout the day, I was able to download Control from the Ultimate Edition store page, and it showed as purchased on my end. Now the web browser store and the store on PS4 tells me to add the game to my basket. Same with me. Yep, same thing here. Ultimate Edition showed as purchased last night for me too, but now it's asking me to buy it. I've got to say everything about this has been a, well, editorialize a disaster from promoting the game hard with the reveal of the awe expansion and putting the game on sale then a day after the sale ending announcing the ultimate edition with its exclusive next gen upgrade path then their dismissive excuse for why they can't upgrade people now with this error showing that what they said was impossible to actually be so possible they accidentally forgot to turn off the automatic upgrade i couldn't be more disappointed so because this is just a thread on Reset Era, you may be wondering why I'm covering it at all. You know, I, I like to look at these things. I like to look at what people are interested in, what maybe they're getting a little bit wrong so that we can talk about them in virtual legality, hopefully get more and better information out there. But also, this thread was picked up all over the place. This is Push Square. Control PS5 upgrade controversy worsens as owners accidentally get free access to Ultimate Edition. Control Ultimate Edition was temporarily shown as being owned by digital deluxe owners on PS4. 505 Games exposed themselves after accidentally giving control owners Ultimate Edition, etc., etc. So the narrative here has been that 505 Games lied to folks, that they lied to folks when they answered this question, that the lie has been exposed. And unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that they didn't lie here. It's very easy to read what they wrote as saying what they wanted to do with respect to the Ultimate Edition was technically impossible to give to owners of things like the Deluxe Edition or owners of the base game and the Season Pass, but they didn't actually say that. They maybe just wanted you to read it as if they had. So let's look at this question again in that new light and see what it is that they do. I own the Control Base Game and Season Pass. Is this not the same as Control Ultimate Edition? Now, they have framed this question to themselves because everybody is wondering why if I supported the game at full price, if I paid $80 or $90 or whatever that was for the Base Game and the Season Pass, why am I not given a free upgrade through the Ultimate Edition, if that's what it has to be through, because I paid much more than you are now selling the Ultimate Edition for, which I believe is $40, is there not a way to make this right? Because, hey, I supported your company early. And so the question is posed, is it not the same? I own the base game and I own the season pass. And then they don't answer that question directly. They say, well, thank you for asking, you know, but the objective of Control Ultimate Edition was not to release new exclusive content on the next-gen platforms, but to offer the full Control gameplay experience to new Control players in a single easy to find product. That's not really saying whether or not it's the same. The PlayStation 5 Xbox Series X versions of Control contain the same content as the current gen game. Absolutely. You don't have to worry about missing out on anything. Though, 
they do take full advantage of the power and features provided by these new consoles, meaning that they might not differ in content, but they will differ in quality, as we would expect, because as I said, there are frame rate issues aplenty on the PlayStation 4 base model, and I think on the PlayStation 4 Pro, but hey, everything will be fine on the PlayStation 5. You just don't get it for free if you paid $80 instead of $40 today. So I own it. Is it the same? Absolutely, it's the same, except you just won't get it upgraded because the second paragraph and the one that everybody is really concerned about. The upgrade path that we are offering is only possible when upgrading from the same version of the game. Now, the lawyer in me jumps out with that blue part of the sentence, right? That blue part of the sentence eviscerates everything else that they might otherwise say about this. That we are offering. Once you add the proviso that we are offering to whatever they say about their upgrade path, it is whatever they are offering. It's tautological. The upgrade path that we are offering is what we are offering. It's only possible when upgrading from the same version of the game because that's what we decided to do. The real question was, hey, if I have these two components, why can't I go and get a free upgrade to the next generation? And they say, we only are giving that to people that own the Ultimate Edition. This question doesn't really talk about the situation that Reset Era or these other news articles are talking about right now at all. There wasn't a question posed about, hey, can I get a free version of the Ultimate Edition? They just say the upgrade path that we are only uh, that we are offering is only possible when moving from Ultimate Edition to Ultimate Edition. As we are only doing additional development on Control Ultimate Edition on the next-gen platforms, we are unfortunately unable to offer an upgrade path to all existing Control players. Now, note the to all there, right? Because one of the things that is happening here is that it looks like however this was arranged on the back end, however they put this up on the PlayStation Store, the Ultimate Edition was triggering that you owned it for at least the 13 hours that it was available if you owned the base game and the season pass. Or maybe, it's a little bit unclear on Reset Era, if you owned the Deluxe Edition, which would have been the product that was most closely aligned with the Ultimate Edition because that was the base game and the season pass content. Now, if you owned that product, you would have been given the Ultimate Edition. But note who wouldn't have been. Your physical players, right? If you've got those rights on digital, that's one thing. And it's very easy to move over to a different license. It's one of the reasons why you see it happen so often in places like Steam, right? Because PC gaming has moved to basically all digital all the time, Steam and companies making PC games through Steam or maybe on other services as well, I believe GOG and CDPR do this on occasion too, say, okay, if we're making a new edition that we want to sell probably at a higher price, we will just give you the new edition if you have the license, if you are showing that you have purchased the older edition in your library. And we can do that pretty easily. We can just check for that license and then you get the new one automatically. I have a number of games in my Steam library in which that has happened. Now, what appears to have happened here is that the PlayStation Network did a similar function. That They said, okay, you've got the season pass. You've got the base game. Now you have the ultimate edition because there's no reason not to. And maybe that's a box that was checked incorrectly on the back end of 505 games. But what they are trying to do, if we give them the benefit of the doubt, is not separate their digital from their physical players. That it would be unfair for the people that purchased digitally to not get the upgrade if they can't also get the upgrade to those folks that purchased it physically. Now, I don't know that that holds any water for you or for me, but that might be one of the things that they would use to defend this kind of action. More importantly, from a kind of legalese standpoint, it means that they're not lying about anything. We are unfortunately unable to offer an upgrade path to all existing control players means that we couldn't offer it physically. Certainly this methodology wouldn't appear to work for a physical purchase of control. So even if this could happen digitally, it doesn't make what they said here wrong. Now, I think behind the scenes on all this is a company in 505 Games that wants to get another $40 out of you if you liked Control or if you want to support Remedy or if you want to see ray tracing on PlayStation 5, etc. And I don't think that's a great thing. And I've said that in my prior videos on this, although I've also said in prior videos that I don't think you're missing out on much because I don't think Control is a very good game. Feel free to leave comments to this video on that topic. I'm happy to answer those questions as well. But at the end of the day, this space, virtual legality, is here to talk about things like business and law and messaging. And so I wanted to point out that despite the fact this is reported as accidentally does what it says was impossible, there is nothing here that suggests that what happened yesterday or the day before was impossible. 
505 Games never suggested that they couldn't give an Ultimate Edition to anyone. They just said that the upgrade path could not be given to folks that just owned the current versions of the content, the base game and the season's pass. In fact, if you really want to break this down, this answer doesn't talk about upgrading from the base game and season pass to the Ultimate Edition at all. It just talks about going to next gen, or at least it talks about next gen as part of the context of the first answer, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X versions. The upgrade path itself is a little bit ambiguous about whether or not you're talking about that upgrade path, which is more likely, or the upgrade path that we saw this other day with Ultimate Edition being given to the baseline users. I don't think that's necessarily properly described as an upgrade path because as far as I know, Ultimate Edition doesn't do anything new on the PlayStation 4 and on the Xbox One models. So I think the upgrade path really was referring to the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X versions, which leaves us at the end of the day with what I called this video, Control Gives a Lesson in Legal Ease, which is to say, when you read these things, maybe drop by virtual legality if it's something that we've covered, maybe talk through the sentences, identify what they say, and more importantly, what they don't say, and then maybe you'll realize that they didn't say any of this was impossible, but maybe you won't need something like this as a fact pattern to suggest that you should be angry about statements like this. You should note at the top end that they avoided the question they posed for themselves and then they spun it off in a different direction in which they made no promises of any kind to anybody. So the ultimate lesson in legalese is that you should never listen to lawyers, except maybe this one here in virtual legality. Thanks for checking out this video. We talk about these kinds of things all the time. You can see up at the top here, we just covered Apple's countersuit of Epic, which is a very long document, but a very fun read. I hope you check it out. I think it's a little bit under an hour and a half. So give yourself some time or run me at two times speed or whatever floats your boat in that regard. We also talked about Twitch returning uh, Ninja to its fold and what that means for Dr. Disrespect and that entire saga. We talked about the Oscars implementing various inclusion quotas and various other things in business and law that affect the news in pop culture that you're otherwise checking out for yourself. So if you like this, like, subscribe, ring bells, tell people that we're here. And if you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.